of the main questions I get from people is, how did I pick the town I'm in? And I'm in Montepulciano in uh, southern Tuscany. We're about 20 miles from the Autostrada, about 20 miles from a high-speed train station in Piusi, and those are important things. They're important things because you don't want to always have to rely on having a car. Now, I finally have a car. I was able to buy a car, uh, which for an American is quite difficult. If you're in the EU, I think it's pretty easy to get a car here or just to bring a car in from wherever you're from and use it here. But as an American, you cannot buy a car. You can buy millions of dollars worth of real estate, but you can't just go and buy a car. So I was able to form a shell company and got my car last week, which has been just awesome. So this is the street. One reason I picked this town, you can tell there's a ton of people walking around. Tons and tons of people. Uh, this is the end of October, getting towards the end, and it's still staying pretty busy. Um, they get over a million tourists a year here. I think it's closer to two million. Most are in the daytime, uh, day trippers, but uh, a lot of well-heeled -heeled tourists that come for the wine and uh, stick around for two or three days. And we're already just that fast to my other property, which brings me up to another good point. I don't like having properties that are all over. I like having properties that are close together. Excuse me. So we're here that fast. Uh, I used to have seven furniture stores and they were all the way from San Francisco to Houston, Texas. And that was a real pain in the ass. So now I, I'm trying to keep all my properties really close. I'm already in the other apartment. I need to get the door unlocked, so I'll see you guys inside. So now we're inside the apartment. This is the other apartment and a couple more downstairs that I have. Um, it's still dark in here because we're still using an auxiliary power source. Uh, it ties into the main power here, but they cut the power to the apartment because we were doing tons of really heavy duty rewiring inside the apartment because we were changing things up, uh, putting in new AC units, all sorts of stuff. So what they do is, because we're cutting into old concrete walls, they just cut the power so we don't have to worry about safety and they run auxiliary power cables, which you can see down here on the floor to everywhere that they need power, even to run big machines like this. We were cutting the travertine floors that were going in and also working in the bathroom and retiling those, uh, all sorts of stuff going on. But this will really start to move quick now. Uh, the furniture's almost done, so I'm very excited about that. And we're hoping in about six weeks, everything's gonna be buttoned up. So uh, let's go inside the living room and take a look at what's going on in there. So I was gonna kind of save this until later in another video, but when you see this place all put together, it's gonna be so spectacular. You'll forget about these spectacular floors, but in the first video I did in this apartment, I mentioned that I was gonna not use the old terracotta tiles that were broken and stained and hard to bring back, and I was gonna go with travertine. And I think people thought I meant I was gonna use some kind of 19, 60s bank travertine really machine stuff and this is what we went down with now we still haven't put in the real baseboards yet those are also travertine but i mean it just brings out it just makes it look so much nicer so one of the most often asked questions i get in comments and also when people write me directly at bradsworld8 at gmail.com is how did I end up picking where I picked? And we've traveled to Italy a lot over the years. Uh, we like wine. Uh, we were very familiar with the Southern Tuscany region, uh, Multipulciano, Malticino, uh, San Gimiano, lots of little towns around here, Pienza, those all sorts of great towns. And I felt that this town in particular from a rental standpoint had enough travelers coming through that would stay long enough that would make it worthwhile. The prices seem to be in line with what you could get in rent and be able to pay off the property in six years, which is generally my litmus test for when I buy an investment property, whether it was in the States when I used to do it there or here. Uh, a lot of good value added pro properties where I could go in and do some work like I was just showing you in this property. Uh, and a, a heavy flow of tourists, like I said, almost two million a year. Uh, Well-heeled tourists, they're coming here, they're buying $100 bottles of wine. Uh, so you can have a luxury apartment like I'm trying to put together and find an audience for it and make a really good return. 
it's a great place. It's central to the rest of the country. I can be in Rome in two hours. I can be in Venice in three hours. I can be in Florence in an hour and a half. Uh, pretty much anywhere you want to be. End of October climate. Uh, I'm actually hot uh, making this video because I'm in the direct sun. And uh, I find that uh, really nice. But it has a real winter. You'll even get some snow here. Uh, so there is the seasons. And it's actually just beautiful now. It's like 75. Uh, so that's how I picked this area, but it's going to be different for everybody. The one thing you're going to have to do is you have to spend a lot of time. I just don't think you can do it in a five day trip. Uh, you, I think you need to research as much as you can, figure out where your family is here or where you like to do. You want to be near the beach, that kind of stuff. It all sounds very simple, but I think people lose track of it and try to get your area that you want to cast your net in to look for properties small. Because when you get here, it's absolutely overwhelming. It, it, this isn't an HGTV show where they, you, someone's going to show you three properties and you're going to pick one. Uh, there's lots of stuff for sale, all sorts of price points, all sorts of areas. Uh, so you're really going to have to do some homework, but you're also going to have to spend some time with your boots on the ground like I did. And I mean, I think months. I think you need to plan out some time to be here, even if you chop it up into two week trips. If you're going to make the investment to buy a property in a foreign country, you have to make sure it's the right fit. Another one of the questions I get all the time is about financing. And it's usually from Americans uh, and Canadians that are asking about it. I'm not sure if you're from the EU, uh, and I'm certainly not sure if you're from like Japan or Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, UAE, any of those places. Uh, but I can tell you as an American, it was virtually impossible to get financing. And I have a very good FICO score. I had cash to put down in, in large quantities as far as the percentage of the purchase price. I mean, you know, 30%, 40% down I could have done because at the time last year when I first started making offers, money was being done at 1.75% uh, fixed for 20 years. That was the, the loan rate here. Now it's closer to four, four and a half, five. It's always a little less than the United States because the uh, base rate here is a little less than the United States. But they have no way to check you. And uh, so it's very difficult as an American citizen uh, to get a loan here. Uh, I could not get it done. The war in Ukraine did not help because in February, pretty much everything shut down. And I was just told, you know, for right now, it's just impossible. Uh, so I didn't do it. If anybody out there knows a way for Americans, Canadians, Japanese, whoever it is, to get funding here at below, say, 6%, uh, let me know, and I'd love to pass it on to my viewers. But that is a very, very difficult thing to do right now. So you're going to have to be thinking about where can I pull some money out of? Uh, can I take a, a, a HELOC, a home equity line of credit on my house, uh, borrow against my house? Uh, maybe you're just going to sell your house and move over, uh, or my best idea uh, is that uh, you might think about coming over for a year, say, and just rent. Uh, I say that from time to time in my videos. It's great to buy a property. It's good to have generational properties that you can leave to your kids and them to their kids, and everyone always has a great place to come to in Italy. But you might want to try on the shoe before you buy them uh, and see how the fit is. So that's just a, a, another little tidbit of, of uh, information for you. So. Uh, if you know of a way to get financing uh, for Americans, Canadians, please send me something in the comments or write me at Brad's World 8. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been kind of teasing in some of my videos, if you watch a lot of them, that we've been looking for a villa. And I've been trying to convince my wife that we should uh, sell everything in America and move over. And she's hedging a little bit. And so I think I found the perfect hedging villa. Uh, it's a place that needs a lot of work. It's an incredible deal. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what town it is in yet because I haven't signed papers on it, but I'd actually like to take you guys and show you and kind of explain uh, how you can find properties like this because I can tell you this property is one of the few properties I've seen here that has straight up equity increases in its very near future. My guys are working on the pile again, if you can hear that. Uh, so we're going to jump in the car. We're going to drive through the country for a while. And uh, I'm going to take you guys and show you the outside of the house. I don't have keys to it, but we're going to sneak onto the property. And I'll tell you a little bit more about how I try to find really special deals. Because that's kind of what I'm good at, is finding these incredible deals and making them right. And uh, 
uh, doing that again and again. That's how you're going to build wealth in buying real estate, whether it's in the U.S. or in Italy or Spain or anywhere that you're going to go. All right, so let's get over there, and we'll see you guys soon. Ciao. Hey guys, well, I finally made it out to the house, so there's olive groves out here, gigantic oak trees, grapevines, a lot of fruit trees. This property I'm looking at has plums, pomegranates, figs, all sorts of stuff, and we're actually already on the property. Uh, this is a county road. It's used for uh, getting to wineries and stuff, but there's also... Uh, a lot of grapes and stuff and some individual houses out here and a pretty nice view well I always make promises and then break them but only only silly promises like I'm not going to show anybody this house until I have the thing locked up and under contract, but there's a million places in Italy and it's not on the market in a regular MLS as we would call it in the US. Uh, so who's gonna know? Um, I think it's a great house. So we're out in the country. This is a 5,000 square foot house. Owner died, left it to family. That happens a lot here in Italy. And uh, it's on a nice piece of property with olive trees like i was mentioning and pomegranates figs plums uh the guy used to make wine and it's just a really i think a special property but it needs a lot of love um but that's what i'm good at i'm good at giving properties love and especially when it's exterior stuff uh, i've always been good at gardening and and uh, redoing landscaping and stuff and i think this place will be good for it but it's a lovely place you can see the view. But when you look around, if your eye is good at catching things, you'll notice these trees haven't been trimmed up in years. You can barely get in. Uh, and uh, it just needs a lot of help. So uh, let's take a quick walk around. And then I want to talk to you guys about something that's really important. The first thing that's super important is that if you're going to go onto a property by yourself, make sure you know somebody and let somebody know that you're doing it. In my case, it was letting my real estate agent know that I was gonna be coming over here to take a look around. Um, look at this house, it's gigantic. And like I said, I don't mind showing it to everybody, but I'm not gonna talk about price and I'm not gonna talk about exact city that it's in until I get this thing wrapped up. But there were some serious issues with the roof, other engineering things that had to be resolved before we could make an intelligent decision on uh, what price to offer. So it's been vacant for about four years. Uh, but to me, especially from this backside, my God, it looks just like a, like a fortress. They're so well built. And I think this was from the 1890s originally. But look at this place. Thank you, Mr. Sun. And within seconds, you're in an olive grove. And look, the trees all have olives on them. So let's go sit down for a second. I want to talk to you guys about a few things that are super important because this video is less about showing you properties and more about discussing some stuff that people have a lot of questions about and thoughts that I always want to get across. So let's go do that. One thing that I wanted to impart to tell you guys in this video was you can do this. You may not be in a position where you can come over and spend 500000 to buy a really nice apartment inside some medieval city or a big villa out in the country. 
but you can certainly come over here and rent a place for a while. If you can work remotely, if you're already retired, I mean, I think for 1000 1200 a month, you could have a very nice apartment, eat out, eat out have cell service, local cell service. You can get a SIM card for uh, $20 a month that gives you eight or nine gigabytes every month. Uh, you don't need a phone. And come over and try it because you don't want to necessarily come over and just buy a place thinking that you would love Italy. Why wouldn't you? Uh, but you would, uh, you know, if you can try it out, try it before you buy it, so to speak, uh, then you have the time, especially if you can come for like 90 days. You don't even need a visa, uh, assuming that you're, you know, from most countries in the world. And come here, try it, travel around. You can travel around cheap on a train. You can go two hours by train for $10 and find little towns, meet people, and see if it's really a good fit for you. But you can do it. It's super simple. And try traveling in the winter months, especially in southern Italy, middle Italy, where I'm at in Tuscany. Yeah, it gets cold here. It can get windy. It can even snow. But bring a coat, bring a hat, and enjoy the fact that there's not a million tourists around it. Everything is, you know, being rented at uh, in January and February. If it's open, uh, you can get stuff at half the normal price. And you can get airfare for $500 from the U.S. And if you're in England, uh, you have no excuse for not coming here because Ryanair can take you to Perugia, which is only an hour from here by car, for $70 round trip. But even from the U.S., $500 round trip. Check out Scott's Cheap Flights. That's who I use for notifications when things are on sale. You can get it for free or you can use the premium service. I'm not being paid by them. Uh, I just use them and I like them. I like Trader Joe's and Costco too, but... Uh, and, and I like La, La Bottega de Nobili uh, here in Montepulciano. There's a lot of places I like. But uh, you can do it. You really can. It's not that hard. And life goes by short, and you never know what's going to happen. Uh, Mr. Putin is pr proving that to us. So enjoy yourself and, and come over here. And if you need anything from me, just, just call and ask. I, I don't monetize uh, any help that I give people. Um, I'm actually that nice. I am more than happy to refer you to people that can help you out because I think everybody should have this opportunity uh, to come here or Spain or Portugal or Europe or New Zealand, wherever it is you decide you want to go. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, I'll give you an update once we have some ink on paper for this thing. I'll uh, let you guys know all the particular details about it and be able to show you some inside video that I've already taken. All right. Ciao, guys.